You're live. Go for All it. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Daring Tech first uh, live feed on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, thanks for all the questions from everybody. We, uh, we appreciate the participation. Um, what I decided to do because a lot of the questions just dealt with general setup as a whole was go through this lovely Deering White Lotus uh, from stem to stern and uh, as I would normally go through it doing a setup. Um, so this will help cover most of the questions as I uh, go through them. Um, and uh, if I miss anything, I have Jamie Deering behind the camera, uh, keeping an eye on the comments and everything. She'll shout out anything that uh, comes up as we do this. And uh, I can clarify if I'm going too fast or if I miss a little detail you're curious about. So I guess uh, here we go. So uh, first thing I always do, is start by taking off the resonator. Uh, if you don't have a resonator, you can skip this part. So on the Deering's Ten Brooks uh, banjos, you got four of these thumb screws. The Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the earthquake. A uh, little slip of the power cord there. Um, on the good times, instead of four thumb screws, you have four Phillips head screws. And it's a number two Phillips is the best. Uh, screwdriver to use for that. Set the thumb screws off to the side, lift the uh, banjo out of the resonator, set that off to the side. So what happens as a banjo just sits or is even played is things kind of loosen up and move. Banjos are one of the most adjustable instruments on the planet. Everything from head tension to coordinator rods, adjusting the action a little bit using those, the truss rod adjustment, making sure the neck's tight. All of that's super important for the final banjo to be uh, sounding as good as it actually can. Um, so first thing I usually do is after I pull the resonator off <clears throat> is I'll check the head tension. Now the head tension, just from playing and moving, will loosen up over time. And slowly, little by little, the string action will start to drop. And you'll start getting some buzzing particularly on the one through five frets. Um, and that's because the action started to get a little too low and uh, to keep the strings clear from the rest of the frets. So the first thing I'll do is give the head a whack. I'll mute the strings, hold my hand over all, this, all five strings. And I'll use my thumb. And you can hear this kind of hollow sound where it resonates. It gets this weird boom, 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 boom. That you don't want on the banjo. Um, that to me signals that the heads are way too loose. We like to take the heads up to a G, G sharp range, um, just as a general setting. Some bluegrass players like to go all the way up to an A. Some old time players like to keep it down in the F and G range. Um, again, it all really needs to be adjusted to what sounds good to you um, because that's the most important part. Uh, what sounds good to the people listening is also important, but if it doesn't sound good to you, you're not going to help make it sound good to them. So um, what I'll do is start working my way around from hook to hook using uh, a nut wrench. We have this handy three-way nut wrench that covers all three sizes of the nuts that we use. Quarter inch on most resonator 10 brook steering models. 932nd for all the good time models and uh, 5 16 for all the open back gearing models. Um, so and on Vegas. this. And Vegas. And Vegas, sorry. <laughs> Vegas also use uh, the 5 16 or the 932nd, uh, depending on the model. Um, for this particular one with the round hooks and the flames, I'll be using the quarter inch. And I'll start up by the neck and just go maybe a quarter turn at a time little by little, till I start to hear this head get nice and tight. You don't want to over tighten the head because you start wearing it out a little too fast. So just work your way around, and you want to get it to where it feels nice and even from hook to hook. Um, we did have a question um, from Jens Kock in Sweden uh, about how to make sure that your head is tensioned 
properly all the way around because uneven head tension can really deaden the sound with certain notes. Um, the best way I've found is not using a torque wrench or a drum dial because they're not sensitive enough. Uh, it's really just by feel. And the more you practice tightening the head, the better you get just like playing. Um, so we will work our way around. And these are turning really easily because that head was so loose. As soon as you start hearing a little squeaking, stop for that particular round of tightening. If you don't hear the squeaking, then really just try and feel how tight they are. So once we work our one way around, I'll give it another whack. So you can hear that hollow resonance is kind of gone. Um, but it's still kind of dead. You want a really bright snap when you hit the head with your thumb. So I'm going to go around one more time. Now I always tighten the head first. That's number one because that affects everything from there. From your action adjustment to your intonation, your setting the bridge, to your tail piece adjustment. Um, and this is also the same procedure I would do on the good time banjo. Just happen to have eight less hooks and nuts on the good time now. There was a good question that popped up that okay. I'm going to ask in this one. Let me see if it shows up here. There's a slight delay. Uh, the question was basically that uh, typically on a drum you go opposite sides or like putting on a wheel. Right. Is that the same with the banjo? I don't. Uh, I've seen people do it. The reason I don't is I've never really found a benefit once the banjo is completely put together. Um, because no matter what you do, as you tighten one hook, the hook next to it loosens. And then you tighten that one and the hook next to it loosens. So I'll generally go around at least two, maybe three times. The final time is always just a small little twist. I mean, a sixteenth of a turn maybe, just to make sure it all feels even. Um, Another thing to keep an eye on also, obviously, is the level of the tension hoop in relation to the head. If you start off with it crooked, then yeah, it's best to start where the high spot is and tighten that down and then start working your way around. The only, only time I go back and forth uh, as I put it together is when I change the head itself. Um, and there is a um, video that I've done on how to change your head on our YouTube channel where I take the banjo completely apart, put a new head on it, and put it all the way back together for you. So if you have questions about how to actually change a broken head or a worn out head, check out the YouTube video. Perfect. One other question. Yeah. What if some bolts are looser than others, and how can I be sure they are similar torque? Um, again, that's just a feel thing, uh, and that's why I always go around one final time, hook to hook, and make sure they just feel the same. Um, generally, if you've done this and you can't get like two or three hooks that are grouped together uh, as tight feeling as the rest, more often than not, that's because the head is broken right there. I've seen that way too many times and I've actually gone around and tried to find fix it because that won't look broken. Um, it's very hard to see sometimes a broken head. Uh, where the head actually pulls out of the aluminum surround here. Um, when the head breaks, you'll find that there's two, three hooks that just won't tighten, no matter what you do. Uh, that's a good sign that it's time to get a new head put on. So now we're, we've gone all the way around the second time. So we're starting to get a really nice crisp snap. So this final time around is just a little tweak on each hook. Make sure it all feels nice and tight. So again, just, and I'm not uh, turning as tight as I can. It's really easy to overstretch these heads, uh, wear them out too fast by doing that, and then needing a new head before you actually need a new head. Uh, one of the questions that always comes up is, how do I know when my head is beyond adjustment? Um, and that is pretty easy to tell. And I'll tell you in just a second. All right. 
Now we're done all the way around. Ah, yeah. Nice, right. Like a snare drum, you get that real crisp pop. That's what you want to hear. Um, on each banjo, no matter the make, there tends to be a step right underneath where the head is on the heel, where it meets the, the rim of the banjo. If your head is touching that step on the neck, on the bottom there, it obviously can't be tightened beyond that point. And that's a good point to uh, swap the head out because you can't tighten it anymore. Uh, at that point, a lot of people are very attached to their heads uh, because they've played them and uh, broken them in and they find that sweet spot. It's like a nice t-shirt. As soon as it breaks in, it's got holes in it and you gotta get a new one. So, um, we did have a question about cleaning our heads. Um, cleaning the head is generally, if you wanna do it, it doesn't have to be done. Uh, a little warm soapy water, uh, just a damp rag. Don't use heavy amounts of, of wet on it and lightly wipe it off and then use a, a, a nice clean paper towel or a terry cloth or something to, to dry it down and let it sit and make sure it's completely dry before you go uh, adjusting and tightening it back up or any of that if you want to. Once I'm done tightening my head, I'll start checking um, the tailpiece adjustment. Now on the good time banjos, the only adjustment we have is a little bit up and down. Um, and that helps dial in kind of the brightness of each note. If your tailpiece is, is as far as it can go above the head, what you're gonna get is a nice soft round note. And that's because the angle coming off the back of the bridge here of the strings is a little bit looser. So it allows the head to move a little bit better. So you open up kind of the mid and low range of the banjo and you lose a little bit of the high end. If you want that nice, crisp, bright uh, bluegrass sound, what you want to do is get that uh, tailpiece as close to the head as you can without actually touching the head. Because if you touch the head, you start damp dampening uh, tones of the banjo. So what I'll do is on the bearings, and so I'll squeeze the uh, tailpiece down against the tension hoop. And use a quarter inch wrench on this particular one um, just to tighten this nut right here. It doesn't have to be like you're putting on a tire lug nut tight, I like to call it. Not that tight because you'll start bending and distorting the tailpiece or the tailpiece bracket. Um, just needs to be nice and snug. This is something you should check uh, every time you tighten your head or you change your strings. Uh, I, I went to uh, Angel Stadium right before a giant country show and uh, one of our artists was using one of our Boston six strings. He had been on the road for a while and I went backstage to talk with his tech on how to make sure his banjo was good. And he said, what's the first thing I should check? Should you always check the tailpiece? And I gave it a little tap and the tailpiece went flying because the nut right here had fallen off and he didn't know you should check that. So uh, that was like 10 minutes before he went on stage. So it's important you always check this nut and make sure your tailpiece nice and tight against the tension hood. Likewise, this screw right here is the angle adjustment screw. That we like to set it leaving the factory, the bottom of the tailpiece here, um, to be even with the head. We don't want it pointed down, we don't want it pointed up. We want the bottom of that to be nice and even with the head. So we can give it a little twist and then set that. The top will look like it's down, but the bottom will be nice and parallel to the head. And you should be able to tap on the top of the tailpiece, especially these newer, uh, tail pieces that we made out of steel. Um, they're nice dead material, so they don't get a lot of ring from it. So if you can tap on it and there's no noise or rattle, you got it nice and tight against the tension hood. So that's the second thing I'll do. Third thing, I'll start checking my coordinator rods back here. Now on the good times, you have one uh, coordinator rod. On most earrings, you have two. Um, oh yeah, you hear that rattle? 
That rattle's pretty common um, if the banjo's been sitting around a while or you've been changing humidities or uh, locations with it. Um, and that's because the, the rim here, we don't put a lot of finish on it, so it's constantly moving with the environment it's in. Um, if it starts to rattle, that little rattle, as you're playing certain notes, it, it harmonically reacts to those notes and you'll get this buzz that just will drive you insane because you're, you're trying to figure out whether it's your fingering or if it's the bridge of the nut getting worn out. Um, this is generally the first thing I check um, for buzzes is the, the uh, coordinator runs. I think that was a question from somebody. I forget. Uh, let me see. Sheila Towers, I think, yeah, on Facebook. She was asking, how, how do I find my buzz? First thing I check, and a lot of people don't, is that. So what we want to do before we tighten up the nut here, because that's what's loose, but we also want to make sure the coordinator rod is tight to the neck. And that's going to seat the neck nice and tight against the uh, rim here. What will happen is if this is loose, as you're playing, you don't know it, but you're deflecting the neck a little bit if it's a little loose and your intonation and cording goes way out the window. Things start sounding really bad um, and you can't quite get it right. So you want to make sure, I use a little eighth inch Allen wrench because um, they're nice and tough and can take a, a pretty good tightening. You just give it a, a good snug tightening. You can see those had a little bit of tightening they needed to be done on. Generally, it doesn't take much for the whole thing to be a little out of whack. Um, so it's important just to go down the list one thing at a time in order uh, because one thing affects the next, affects the next, affects the next. So once we have those tight, use a half inch wrench and on this, and snug that down and snug that down. You can see both of them are loose. Now when I, they both might be nice and dead. There's no rattle, there's no hum. That's what you want to hear. Um, as we send these out from the factory, we do our best to send them out with zero uh, action adjustment or adjustment on the coordinator rods themselves. We like to just have them tight because these coordinator rods come in handy for slight action adjustments. Some people like the old time frailers uh, claw hammer folk like a little bit higher action so they can get in there at the end of the fingerboard without hitting the head and everything uh, So bluegrassers like a nice low action so they can really get in there and tear it up and play fast um, The coordinator rods can be used for those slight action adjustments uh, and at, once I get uh, The next set I'll come back to how to adjust the action on those. We have one question mm -hmm. slightly off topic, but not entirely um, somebody who has a, a good time asked if their tailpiece is adjustable, and if it's not, can they put an adjustable tailpiece on there? Okay, uh, good time uh, tailpieces are not adjustable, other than a slight up or down. Uh, the hole that goes over the coordinate, end of the coordinator rod is ovaled a little bit, so you have a little bit of play to go up and down with it. Um, but as far as the tilt of the uh, top of the tailpiece, it is not adjustable. Can you put a deering uh, adjustable tailpiece on it? Yes, it just requires a uh, tailpiece bracket like this has, where it's, we call it an L bracket or tailpiece bracket, where it mounts, that mounts to the coordinator rod, and then the uh, adjustable tailpiece can mount to that. All right, up next, uh, after I have all this tight, before I play with my action adjustment and coordinator rods, I check my truss rod. Good times don't have the truss rod, uh, so this is something that uh, can be skipped on a good time. The Deerings, Vegas, and Tenbrooks all have the truss rod, and now our good time six string, uh, steel string one has a truss rod in it. Uh, to adjust the Deering, Vega, Tenbrooks banjos, quarter inch nut driver is what you need, along with a small number one Phillips to remove the truss rod cap. <coughs> So I'll remove the truss rod cap, two screws. Um, sometimes you go see a professional play and they take their truss rod cap and they throw it like a frisbee. 
because they're moving around so much and they're so sensitive to what they play that they need to be able to adjust it for almost every venue they go to. So um, that's why you see some professional players play without their truss rod cap on. Uh, so the truss rod cap does nothing but covers up the truss rod. In there is that quarter inch nut. Now the best way I've found to check whether or not the truss rod needs adjustment is to fret the G string, the number three string, right down the middle here, at the first and at the 21st fret. Then I'll stretch out and use my thumb and kind of tap down on the G string to see how much space is between the seventh fret and the bottom of that string. What I'm looking for is about a credit card's width to be between the top of the seventh fret and the bottom of that G string. So pretty small clearance. Um, what'll happen is like this one, if it's too much, as you go to chord down here, between seven and about 12 to uh, 15 there, um, it gets really hard. You have to lift your fingers way off and then press way down to get to those. Each neck uh, that has a truss rod needs a little tiny bit of that relief, we call it, in the neck where it has just a tiny slope to it. And that's to keep the notes clean as you play up the neck. Um, what I mean by clean is, is if it's too flat, you'll get some buzzing off the top of frets, especially if you're playing down here to where the string clearance gets a little too close here uh, on those frets. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is tighten this nut clockwise about a quarter turn. That should about do it. And then recheck it. Oh, it's perfect. Um, this is something, again, that I've seen all different types of players at uh, different levels have different adjustments on it that feels good to them. This is one of those adjustments that needs to be in your sweet spot. People that are real heavy pickers or real heavy claw hammer players need a little more relief in there because their strings are flopping them over the place. Uh, some of the guys that have a little more delicate touch or, or ladies out there have more delicate touch um, don't need as much relief and they can get away with a little bit flatter uh, finger work. So once I have that on there, I'll put the truss rod cap back. That's something I like to, to check every time I change the strings because uh, it's an easy, quick adjustment. You don't have to take the whole banjo apart or anything. <laughs> These little screws are a little difficult. Just be gentle and patient with your banjo. That's an important thing here. <laughs> okay. So we got a tight head. We got tight coordinator rods. We have a tight tail piece. We have a beautifully set uh, truss rod. Next up is the uh, action adjustment. Um, <clears throat> once you tighten your head and get everything snug back to where it's supposed to be, your action can now be like way too high or uh, at least feeling way too high from what you're used to um, or what it should be because everything's tightened back up. Uh, for this, we like to set it from the factory off the top of the 22nd fret on all five strings and four strings. Um, uh, six strings we like to set off of the top of the fingerboard, not the fret, by the 22nd fret here. To the bottom of this first string, we like to set it an eighth of an inch. That tends to be pretty usable for everybody out there. A lot of people, uh, professionals especially, will dial that in a little bit for what feels best to them. Um, so I'll take my eighth inch uh, Allen wrench, set it up there, and then kind of tap on that string. And if you have a gap between the bottom of that string and the top of your eighth inch, um, you need to adjust that just a little bit. The way we do that is with the uh, coordinator rods here. So first thing I'll do is loosen this inside coordinator rod, the one closest to the head. Next thing I'll do is adjust 
the action a little bit using this uh, lower coordinator rod, the one closest to the bottom of the rim, to bring the action down just a hair. What we want to do is tighten this outside nut. So we want to loosen this inside one, tighten this outside one. What that's going to do is it's going to pivot off of this short coordinator rod, the one inside the rim. On a good time, it'll pivot off of the hanger bolt that you see in there. Uh, to tighten that, that's a 3 8 nut on a good time banjo. Just need a 3 8 wrench or a 3 8 nut drive. So I'm going to pivot off of this, and it's when I tighten this nut here, it's going to pull that coordinator rod that way just a little bit. And that, what that's doing is it's going to be tilting the neck backwards ever so slightly and a little bit goes a long way I'm talking like half turn never more than a full turn on a, on a coordinator rod adjustment um, because then you start distorting the pot and once you distort the pot you can start distorting the tone a little bit um, so what we'll do is we'll loosen that inside nut and do a little quarter turn then I'll check it that looks about right there Oh, that's perfect. It's like I've done this before. <laughs> uh, so now that I have this outside nut tight where I want it, now <clears throat> opposed to that, if I want to raise the action just a little bit, because I like a little higher action, I'd loosen this outside nut, tighten this inside nut, and to push that coordinator rod that way a little bit, lean the neck up a little, and then I'll raise your action. A little bit goes a long way, really. So. Uh, nice and easy on that. Once I have that tight, I'll tighten this inside nut on this lower quarter rod here. And then same on that inside quarter rod. And again, these don't need to be crushed the wood lug nut tight uh, because we don't want to damage the banjo. It's a nice instrument. Be nice to the banjo. Uh, just get it nice and snug. Once we have that one, oh, didn't quite get it all okay. There we go. There we go. Uh, once I have that all done, last but not least is the intonation adjustment. Now, every time you tighten your head, what happens is that material is moving, right? It's pulling down a little bit, it's stretching out. That'll move the bridge. Every time you tighten your head, you need to check the intonation. I had a lot of questions about the uh, bridge placement and how to check it properly. Um, most importantly, because it affects every chord and every note played um, once you have it tuned up. In order to check intonation, I like to uh, get the banjo in tune first. set um, unless you call it an order with a medium gauge setup and we can do that for you um, but our light gauge set tends, is more of a hybrid set kind of a mix between the medium and the heavy or the medium, medium and the light uh, actual lights go down to a nine and a half on the ends and then 11 13 and 22 or 21 um, our light gauge set is 10s on the outside. We like the 10s. Uh, mostly because Jens Kruger told us we like the 10s. It sounds a little bit better. Uh, it takes a little bit of that super, super bright twang off the banjo. A little rounder sound for us. But we have a million different sets of strings uh, available. Okay, now I did hear a question about a, a creak when they were moving the... Oh, sorry. I did have a question about a creak on their uh, the string as they were tightening it. Um, this one's creaking a little bit on the G string. <clears throat> One way to fix that is to take a little pencil lid and rub that in the nut slot underneath the string. 
And what will happen is it will help lubricate that nut slot and allow the string to slide a little bit easier. check our intonation once we're in tune what we can check because the banjo bridge is fixed it's not like an electric guitar where you can intonate each individual string we're only really able to intonate two strings the first and the fourth is what I do um, everything else you really can't adjust without going to a compensated bridge uh, and there's a million of them on the market from the moon bridges to actual step compensation um, most people, it doesn't bother too much. What will happen is the G, when you fret it, will be a little sharp compared to the rest of the, uh, the notes. Uh, if it bothers you, uh, start looking into uh, compensated bridges to help rectify that problem. I saw that question pop up a little while ago. Um, so to check intonation on the first and fourth strings, uh, on a five string, first and sixth on a six string, first and fourth on all the four string banjos. We want to make sure that our open note, this is a D right now, is the exact same note fretted at the 12th fret. If it's not, that means our intonation's on. So like this one, well, wrong tuner. <laughs> so what I have here, and my tuner's telling me what I'm hearing, uh, is the same thing, is fretted this d is very sharp compared to it being played open but that means my bridge is too close to my fingerboard i need to lengthen this distance in order to make it match so very carefully lift up and slide it back tiny bit tiny bit don't get uh super uh <clears throat> super ambitious with it because a little bit like all the rest of the banjo goes a long way um, unless you're fretting a D uh, you're, you're playing a D open and you fret it and it's like an A or something <laughs> then you got real big problems it's way out of whack so then you can move drastically but I'm a little bit sharp want to retune that note we're still sharp so we're gonna move it back a little bit more and while you're doing this pay attention how the strings are lining up on the edges of your fingerboard. So it's really easy when you pick, pick up that, that bridge to slide it back a little bit, to slide it a little off center. So what'll happen is your fifth string or your first string starts hanging off the edge of the fingerboard and the uh, strings coming off your tailpiece are a little sideways and it, it just, everything gets a little funky. So make sure you're moving it just straight back and forth. that my tuner says I'm happy with that another way to check it is if you know how to do a harmonic is to hit that harmonic at the 12 and then play that fretted note you want those to match exactly next we'll check our first string that's nice that's good uh, one thing that's really important when you're fretting these notes and checking it against your open note is be gentle. Only fret as hard as you need to fret to get a clean note. Uh, it is possible to over fret it and stretch that note and make it sharp uh, by, by pressing too hard. Couple so, of questions. Yeah. What's the typical lean angle of the bridge and can you slide the bridge and adjust it without detuning? Uh, so the first uh, question about the angle of the bridge. Our Daring Smile Bridges, that's what every banjo that leaves here uh, comes with, other than our four strings. Um, it'll look like it's leaning. What in actual fact is happening is the back of the bridge here should be 90 degrees to the head. The front of the bridge has a slightly different angle to it, so it'll look like it's leaning backwards. Um, some of the other bridges on the market have an angle on both sides of it. 
and that needs to be placed to where the uh, center line of that bridge is straight up and down. So you don't want to lean too far back uh, because it'll fall over as you're playing and nobody wants that. It'll also lift the feet off of the head. That's the most important thing is the bottom of the feet need to make as much contact with the head as possible. You don't want to lean it forward or backward because that'll lift part of the foot off of the head. And you'll get some little bit of funkiness, a little buzzing, and you'll lose some tone uh, from the bottom of the head and the bottom of the foot making contact. They need to be as solid as they can so as much of that note transfers into the head as possible. So really, you don't want to have it lean uh, one way or the other. Um, also, can you move the bridge without detuning the strings? Yes, absolutely. Uh, as long as you lift it, if you can lift it just a little bit, take a little pressure off of it, even with the tension of the strings on it, and slide it, uh, it's a lot better than detuning, trying to move it, tuning back up to check it. Um, so you want, you want to, uh, except it's the six strings is really hard to do that with because obviously you have a lot of heavy strings on there compared to a normal five string banjo or four string. Um, those I like to detune the inner four strings, leave only the two E's tuned up to pitch to set my intonation with. Another question from, from Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. He asked, uh, I get a bit of a buzz on my third string after I changed my strings last. Any ideas? Uh, if you're getting a buzz on your third string, that tends to be the most difficult string. For some reason, it likes to buzz. Uh, there's a couple things to check. Um, if it's buzzing open, uh, first thing I would check is my nut slot. Make sure it's not worn out. Um, the way I check the height of my nut slot is by fretting at the third fret, right? <clears throat> there should be a small gap above, between the first fret and the bottom of that string. And if there's not, that means my nut slot's a little too low. Um, and that can cause a little bit of slight buzzing. If you're getting it while you're playing uh, on the G string, I would check uh, first, uh, the relief uh, adjustment with your truss rod or whether or not your frets are worn out. Uh, from long time playing, these frets do wear out uh, and they need to be replaced. Uh, what you're looking for is little valleys that have worn into the fret right underneath the string. Um, generally, most banjo players, it's, it's typical to have first through fifth different varieties, uh, varieties of, of divots in their frets right there because uh, most songs are played up there. Uh, we, we've had to do uh, someone like Jens Kruger's banjo all the way up because uh, he's all over the place and he's worn out frets from top to bottom um, and we've had to do his uh, a couple times a year because he's playing six to eight hours a day practicing and, and, and writing new songs. Um, so always a good idea to check frets, uh, make sure they're not getting worn. Um, another thing that can happen that can cause a buzz, not too common, if you happen by chance to mix up your second and third string, and you put the second string on the third string spot, and you tune that to your G, that light gauge, um, generally the 11, if it's in that middle string, it's too loose, it's too light a gauge to get up to that G and hold tension, and it can be a little fuzzy. So you wanna make sure you're very careful putting your strings on and you don't mix up the gauges. Um, all right, so now that I have my intonation adjusted, my action adjusted, my head's adjusted, um, I like to give my banjo a nice wipe down because my hands have been all over it. Uh, everybody's oil in their skin reacts differently to the nickel uh, and that's what 95% of our banjos are plated with uh, and most banjos on the market are plated with nickel. Nickel is very easily corroded by skin oil and uh, salty air and, and water um, so it's important if you don't like a nice uh, patina banjo, I have one, um, to wipe it down every time you're finished playing it or every time you finish setting it up, 
otherwise your fingerprints are there forever. Uh, I've had several different people working here over the years. Uh, some people have to wipe it down, I mean, within a minute. Otherwise their, their fingerprint is uh, forever etched in the nickel. Uh, I'm fortunate my skin doesn't react that much with nickel. Um, I can wipe mine off you know, a couple days later and it tends to go nice and clean. Um, we do have these daring care cloths. Uh, this is a specially formulated cloth for uh, polishing nickel and chrome. We have one that does gold as well. Um, that has, it has a wax and a cleaner in it to not only clean off the fingerprints, but to put down just a light layer of wax to keep it nice and shiny, if that's your thing. Um, I like a nice shiny banjo. Helps, uh, helps you know, bring a little sparkle to it. <laughs> so, uh, what I'll do is I'll take this and just kind of wipe down the metal. Um, with nickel, you can be pretty, uh, you can rub it pretty decent. Don't uh, get too crazy with it because um, you can actually rub the nickel off if you're really, really uh, ambitious about it. The gold, uh, because our gold plating is real 24 karat gold, it's very soft and you need to be gentle, gentle with that gold plating. Uh, the nickel and chrome have at it. Um, one of the places that tends to be the worst worn is the armrest. Ooh, forgot to adjust the armrest. You can hear that rattle as I hit it. We'll adjust that real quick. Quarter inch nut here. I want to loosen that just a little bit where I can squeeze and move the armrest down tight as I can against the tension hook and then snug that nut back down so we get no sound. <laughs> we don't want any sound. If you do uh, like your arm further away off the head uh, because it's a better angle for your wrist, make sure it's nice and away from the tension hook so you're not getting any kind of residual buzz off of it. Um, this one has one of our nice new wooden armrests on it uh, to help uh, anybody who happens to have any kind of reaction to nickel. Um, so I can't really polish that. <laughs> uh, but that tends to be one of the first places to wear through uh, with banjo players. 